Welcome. As we gather on Maundy Thursday, now I'd love to be able to welcome you to come and join us um, in church. I'd love to be able to welcome you into our house. Um, but we can't do either this year. Um, and that's very strange as we come to the most solemn and important part of the church's year. It's actually particularly hard um, amongst the many things we miss to not be able to come together for worship. I don't know about you, but for me, it's many, many years since I wasn't able to join in the remembrance of Holy Week by coming to church. But maybe the rather odd circumstances in which we find ourselves this year as we travel through a Holy Week may make us think again and afresh about what we're doing. Normally, of course, we'd have that full set of services in church that we all enjoy using the resources we all have. But we can't do any of that this year. I think it's worth reflecting on the fact that none of the events that we remember in Holy Week happened in a place of worship, or indeed anywhere near one. The Last Supper, which you remember tonight, happened in a borrowed room in someone's home. And we are in our own homes. In our holiday club, Crowns and Crowds, we're remembering today, Maundy Thursday, under the title, A Meal with a Twist. Because what Jesus did was to take some very familiar practices from Jewish custom and invest them with new meaning. And the simple actions of sharing bread and wine become the means by which these events of so long ago become a present reality in our lives. The ordinary things of bread and wine become the means by which we are sustained in our pilgrimage of faith. Jesus invites us to his table. And to represent that, there is a place set for you at this side of the table. Now this of course cannot be like our normal celebration on Maundy Thursday, but I invite you to share with me in remembering the meal from which our communion service comes and to mark that with bread and wine in your own homes. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let's take a moment to recall our need of God's forgiveness. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and let us ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And now the collect for today, Maundy Thursday. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, 
we hear our first reading, read for us by Sharon. The reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death, until he comes. The Corinthian church must have been an exciting one to belong to, but it was also one that was full of problems. And one of those was the chaotic and divisive way in which they broke bread together. Here, Paul is trying to help them realise what it means to share in the bread and wine. He takes it right back to the bare essentials. And there are two real points he makes in these verses. Firstly, it is in obedience to Jesus' command. It is a remembrance of him. We remember that Jesus laid down his life for us. We remember that his body was broken. We remember that his blood was spilt. That we might be forgiven and reconciled with God. Firstly then, it's remembrance. And then secondly, Paul tells us it's a proclamation. We tell the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, the story of salvation. We do that in words during our worship, and this equips us to proclaim the saving work of God outside the walls of the church to the people amongst whom we live. And we may do that in words, but also in actions. Going to hear now our second reading from John's Gospel, read to us by Laura. The reading is taken from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17 and 31 to 35. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I will tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. 
If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. All four Gospels relate the story of the Last Supper. No Gospel would be complete without it. But John is unique in relating Jesus washing his disciples' feet. It is a detail that highlights Jesus' humility and his willingness to serve. And in a very real sense, it anticipates that even greater act of humility and service that will shortly follow, when Jesus allows himself to be arrested and then killed in an agonising and barbaric manner. This is how far Jesus will go in serving you and me. This is how low Jesus is prepared to stoop for us. And it reminds us that humility and service should be hallmarks of Christian living. We walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, and if we do so, there should be no room for pride or arrogance. We show our love for Christ by living like him, by being humble, by being prepared to serve. One of the interesting things about these strange times in which we live is that we are now being forced to realise who are the really key workers in our society. And it turns out the people that we really need are the people who serve. Medical staff, delivery drivers, care workers, rubbish collectors, supermarket staff, cleaners, people working on public transport. The people whose humble service reflects the way of Jesus. Now when we come out of these challenging times, and we will, let's try and hold firm to a true understanding of the value of humble service, something that Jesus models for us and that Jesus expects to see in us. So how do we ensure that we become more like our Lord in humble service? We need to understand his motivation and we need to share in that motivation. And it can be summed up in just one word, love. As Jesus says at the end of that passage we heard from John's Gospel, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So we turn to God now in prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of our world. Father, on this, the night that he was betrayed, your son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. And so we pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. 
on this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but himself suffered rejection. And so we pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and, taking the form of a servant, he washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise and we too join angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your Passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive, now and for ever. Amen. As is traditional on Maundy Thursday, we don't end the service with a blessing. We simply read the Gospel of the Watch as we remember the disciples and Jesus leaving the upper room and going to the Garden of Gethsemane. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the cock crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, 
James and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion? said Jesus. Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, wearing nothing but a linen garment, was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. You might like to spend some time immediately after the service or later in the evening just being quiet before the Lord and remembering his vigil in the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> 